Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We are live with Salvage from the old house. We're not quite sure what to call it, so we're just calling it the old house for now. Yeah, we, don't, we haven't <laughs> named the house, so if you have a name that you want to name our house, comment below. We'll take suggestions because we haven't come up with anything good. <laughs> if you're new to our channel, make sure you hit subscribe and notifications. We go live every Wednesday with junk, show you what to do with Waste Not Wednesday, and we also do DIYs and most recently, house renovation videos, and then Saturdays we're live at 8.30 Mountain Time with our thrift hauls. So all kinds of fun stuff going on in this channel. This ho the house uh, renovation is like the best of both worlds because we're doing an addition which is almost going to be like a new build, but we're also taking a hundred year old house and completely transforming it. All of the kind of fun detail that would have been in it when it was originally new is gone already. So we're just taking it back and we're going to add that back in. Lots of DIY. And then showing you how we do that plus run the business we have going on our website, jamierayvintage.com, which is where we sell our products and Molly's forget me not. So good stuff. This is going to go um, in our retail space. We're not refinishing it for us. It's just a little hutch um, that was in built in right next to the stairs. Um, we actually have footage of Zeb cleaning out some playing cards under where this actually originally was. So if you want to see where this came from, make sure that you watch the video tomorrow. So we've yep. got a little bit of that on there. We thrifted these feet. They were what? How much for two? They were two dollars for two, so a dollar a piece. Okay, a dollar a piece. And because this was a built-in, the base is not super sturdy and it's kind of short. So Zeb is going to show you how to add feet. Then we'll get started painting. Um, probably first we need to fill in these holes because we're gonna just be using one hole and not two. So that can dry while you put the feet on. Yep, I'm gonna do that right now. I'm trying to unwrap these without making too much crinkly noise and I'm not successful. Did you have the putty in here? I have this. We're gonna just use That'll this. Work. I don't wanna use Bondo in the no, house. No, I don't wanna use Bondo in the house. So we're gonna show you how we take this built-in and turn it into a standing piece of furniture that we can sell in the shop. We're kind of going for a little girl theme. We're gonna mix um, some leftover petticoat pink and cowgirl coral. And then I don't know what we're gonna do after that. So these feet so. are gonna be a little bit oversized. They're gonna be close spacing wise, but I don't know that you'll even notice the back feet much once they're on there. We'll see how it looks. I may have to eventually off camera later, chop them down and put just the small portion on, but we're gonna try to give it some height first. Yeah, we'll see what we do. You never know. Well, if you chop it off, then you can take these bottom feet and use them for something else. Yeah, I'll have two feet. Two for the price of one. All right, where's the comments? I'm going to pull those up while you tell them what you're doing there. Okay, so I'm going to get, first off, we got to take these handles off. We may save those for later for something else, but they're not kind of the vibe we're going for right now. So I'm just going to take these off and fill them. I'm going to be filling them with that patch and paint it's a lightweight spackle and it works really well you have to let it dry a little longer than you would bondo and maybe even apply two coats because sometimes it says it doesn't shrink but sometimes i have it have issues going back down into the well, hole because i push too far we might have to heat gun it where's the right oh, there, there it is <laughs> like where's the youtube app i'm gonna pull up comments so Zeb has been working like crazy. I think at some point he's gonna be like, okay, I can't stand anymore. He was up to like two o'clock last night and then up at six o'clock this morning. It's fun, I've been having a good old time. All right, you turned off the sound on this. All right, let's I see. I don't know, I don't know if the sound's off. <laughs> Sandy says, Jamie, you look great. Thanks, Sandy. Um, we've got a new channel member. Let's see where that played in. Christine Bucklad. So speaking of channel members, if you are a channel member, we are going to be doing a live video tonight at 8.30. We'll post that link about 15 minutes before the live in the community tab. Um, and the live is going to be on, what, what did you call it? Hope versus fear. Hope versus fear. So we're going to be talking a lot about our recent home buying process, um, but also how that applies to business. Because this home that we bought isn't just for us. It was also definitely a business decision on our part. So we are yeah. excited about that. Let's see if we've got any more. Well, there's so much paint in these old screws, I can't hardly get it down in there. I almost need to like chisel it out. I think I got this last one struggling. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now that that's been said. All right. This has been painted with years and years of latex. 
So you can kind of see Zeb sanded it down pretty good, but it's like peels off. This is why you do not paint furniture with latex paint. It's no bueno. Um, we did sand off as much as we could get loose, but we are going to be painting over the top of this with DIY paint. And the little trick that we have is that we will do a thin coat, let it dry, and then go thicker. So we might not get the whole thing painted on camera. This is really slick. And so when you paint over slick paint, you get kind of streaks in it. So you have to be a little patient, do a few more coats, and let it dry all the way, which I usually just like to slop it on there. So. All right, I'm going to go grab sandpaper because Jamie decided last minute she did not want these knobs. So I was not ready for that. And I... then a putty knife so that I can fill these holes and we'll put new holes in and new knobs. All right, let's mix up right. some paint here. I'm Are back on gonna start I'm, I'm gonna start painting, or at least mixing paint, so. Yeah. This thing is a little larger than I had it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty oh, good sweetie, size. Oh, can you open that one for me? Yeah. All right, so we got about this much petticoat pink and I'm gonna pour in some cowgirl coral. Makes kind of a blush color. Hopefully it's enough paint to finish this project. Because when you mix paint, you always gotta make sure you have enough. The question is, do I have something to mix it with? Um, let's draw something. All right, we've got a plastic spoon here. This is, mixing paint is perfect for Waste Not Wednesday because when you mix paint, you're not, you know, I had like just a little bit of the cowgirl coral, probably not enough for a big project, so it's a good way to use it up. Make sure you stir it really, really good. That takes a while. I'll show you an up close. Hopefully that doesn't take too long finding sandpaper. I'm kind of boring when I'm on camera by myself. So next week, I'm going to be at girls camp. I'm going to church camp with girls ages 12 to 18. I'm in charge of like me and three other women are in charge of leaders and like 200 girls. So Seth will be on his own. That'll be interesting. <laughs> When he, he went away and he went to um, scout camp with the boys, and that's when I went live with Caitlin. So maybe he'll invite Caitlin back. I don't know. What are you going to do live while I'm gone? Oh, for next week? Who are you going to have go on Waste Not Wednesday with you? I don't know. You have to find someone. We can, maybe we, a kid. We've got some fun stuff we could do. Yeah, we're pulling out lots of art. I'm going to show you this color. It's a good blush. So this is what petticoat pink mixed with cowgirl coral. There you go. Pretty. So what I'm doing here is I'm just sanding where the old handles were. They've got years of paint built up around them so you can actually see the indent where they were. And I'll try to fill that with the lightweight. The lightweight spackle actually works really well for filling that in. I tell Jack I used his Star Wars spoon. I'm gonna have to wash this paint off of there before he sees it. It was free in a box of cereal, but it's his favorite. So if you know what grid I'm using, comment below. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got my paint pixie brush here and I'm going in down on the side. Oops. There we go. So you can watch him sanding and watch me paint. Now this side was the side that was unfinished because it was up against the wall. So you'll see how well this will go on. This is like almost full coverage in one coat because the wood is raw. But when you paint over that latex, you're gonna get a little bit different look. All right, I think that's smooth enough. This would be so cute in the little girl's room. Storage underneath in the cabinet portion and then bookshelf above for baskets or books or whatever. All right, how's that coming? You gonna? I'm just gonna do it right here. Yeah. Okay. We're ready to fill holes. He's using a putty knife to put it on. You want to go a little thicker than the hole. You want to talk to him about that because there is some trick to it. You don't want to clean it super smooth. Yep. And I'll bring you in close in just a sec. So if you push down real hard when you're scraping it off, a lot of times you'll create a divot in there with the putty knife because this is pretty soft before it dries. And then when you go to sand it, you've got still can see the impression of where the hole is. So if you leave it a little high above the level of like the piece you're trying to fill, then you can just sand that down smooth and you won't see the divot anymore. Same, same thing applies with like Bondo or wood putty. Most of them are designed these days to not shrink. And if you're local to Utah and you have a little girl that would love this cabinet, it's going to be at Molly's. 
I need to advertise Molly's because summertime is always slow at the shop. So we gotta keep the shop alive. Although oddly enough, usually the end of July it picks up once people get past, we have what's called Pioneer Day. It's a big holiday here in Utah. Once we get past Pioneer Day, we usually pick up a little bit. Families like to do family reunions all month of July. Okay, so I've been kind of working it down into the hole so that that whole space gets filled. And then I'll bring the camera close so you can see my little uh, raised spots. All right, so you can see here where the little round indent is where I pushed in. That's where it went down and then it came back up because the hole was getting pretty full. And then I just left the whole area around a little ridge. That way I have room to sand off and that'll make it so that I can get it completely flush. When I sand, I won't use my fingers or anything like that or a soft sponge. I'll use this hard piece of wood. This is just a scrap piece of oak and I'll use that to sand over it. That way it doesn't press down into the hole because if you're using your fingers, you can get down in there through the sandpaper and create a little indent and you'll see that impression when you paint it. So I think it'd be cute to leave the inside of this white. Okay. It just needs to be another fresh coat. So we'll just paint the outside pink. All right. And then we'll come back in when we're not live anymore and brush on a coat of white. Unless we have time, I don't know. Do you want to show them up close, like the difference between like the little, the streaks, how it covers over the top yeah. of the latex. So you just get a little bit better coverage on the so we got raw wood here, and then the streaking, as Jamie's talking about, it's not bad. No. But it's you can noticeable. see a second coat will cover that completely up. You can just kind of see where she lifted her brush or ended her stroke here and there. And that'll go away as soon as we second coat it. Yeah. Can you get the heat gun out and heat gun And we always get asked this. We paint hinges all the time because it hard. makes it look old. These already had layers and layers and layers of paint. When people have built-ins like this, very rarely will they take out the hard, take off the hardware of the hinges and it's always just painted over in these old homes and these old built-ins. So we do it too because it actually makes it feel older. Well, and I will take and hand sand them to make, and open and shut them just so they're super loose and then we'll seal them so nothing chips off. So they will be functional. That's the biggest thing. If you paint them and then you don't sand them and get any chunks off of there, sometimes it makes it hard. All right, you wanna show them how you're adding those feet? Yeah, I, I will. This now I'm gonna add the feet here, but I gotta do some measuring. You know. Oh, you filled both the holes? Where are we gonna screw the new knobs in? Maybe I'll just poke it in the top one. <laughs> okay. I just filled them both because I didn't know which ones you wanted to use. I was gonna use those ones. I was just practicing. Okay, you did good. <laughs> All right, so this bun foot is almost, I'm gonna say five inches so that I give myself a little wriggle room. So I wanna be two and a half inches in from the edges, from the, the top and the bottom. And let me bring you around here so you guys can see where I'm talking about. And I don't think, oh, there's a pen over on the table. All right, we're good to go. Okay, so we'll angle that down there. All right, so this is the bottom of the built-in. It had a two by four back here behind supporting it. And then this was the front. And this was up against the wall where we had the bare side with no paint. And this side had a piece of trim that kind of splintered up when we took it off. So I just removed that, got rid of it. Now we've got the face. I'm gonna leave the little face on here. I think that's okay. Well, and this dips down below the face, so it would look good. Yeah, so. I guess you could cut it off flush. Yeah, I could, and, I'm, and we might later, but for now I'm just gonna leave it because it'll look all right like this. Yeah, I think it's kind of charming. Okay, you, let it, me. It's salvage. That's the whole thing. Is it's like leftover. So if you get over, if you get rid of any of the history of it, then people won't know. Well, and there's a lip on one side, and it's flush on the other because there's a lip where it met up against the wall here, and then this side is flush with the cabinet, and you won't even really notice unless Sorry, you're I looking. Just, I just painted your paint. That's all right. You won't really notice that unless you're looking directly at it from um, like the see. side. We have, oh, Debbie's on here. I always paint the hinges and then just dress them. Yeah, Debbie's, Debbie's like us. We paint cobwebs, we paint anything. Um, I am using a mix of cowgirl coral and petticoat pink. What's your favorite thing about my new house, Debbie says. What's your favorite thing? So um, my favorite thing? I've been tearing out the walls and, and all of the extra stuff we're getting rid of. And there are no bugs. I've torn out probably 
four or five homes we've torn down now that we've used to get salvage out of that we just didn't care about. We were just tearing them down because the owner was going to just take them all the way down. And sometimes you get in there and the walls are just like thick. You get an inch of dust and cobwebs and bug, and bug stuff. <laughs> And there's none of that in this and house. No, like, like it doesn't that, have. They must have had a good exterminator. Like there's no there's no signs of mice or anything anywhere, and that is really really rare in an old home because they weren't sealed up like we seal homes up now. And even now, like we have ants in this house in the summertime. Well, she didn't have any. It was an older lady that lived there, so she didn't have any kids eating food in the in there. So. All right, so I'm just going to, so these are threaded. They're not dowel screws, they're just threaded here. So they don't have the point is the difference. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just a little bit small. I think this is 5 16 So I'm gonna try to see if I can do a quarter inch hole in here and see if I can force them down in and thread them in. If not, I might have to go 5 16 and I have glue and things and that's plenty of support to hold it in a tight hole like that with glue, it'll be fine. And I would say this is about a 50-50 mix of cowgirl coral and petticoat pink because it's about what was left in both of them. And this will paint this entire cabinet. Now, I'm not going to repaint the inside. We'll just clean that out really good. Okay, so I think it's I've got done. enough room right here. I'm going to try to... So I have two boards right here. One is the bottom of the dresser or the cabinet, and the other is just something that was on it, and I reinforced that and put some extra staples in it before we go oh! live. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna try to not drill through. I'm gonna go about three turns in. Okay, I'm through the first board. Okay, now we will see. And I'm gonna put a little glue on here just for good measure. You know, some things that they say they don't require glue and you don't have to glue them. I, if I can, I glue because it just, it just helps. And this is the wood glue I love to use is Type Bond 2. It works for a ton of things and the bond is stronger than the wood would be. I've had boards break before the joint I glued broke. As long as it's tight, that's the biggest thing is you've got to have that glue tight. I'm gonna try to find the outlet here. All right, I think the quarter inch hole for the 5 16 bolt is going to work. It's screwing down nicely, making its own threads in that wood. I gotta move a lot because this is latex. I don't, I don't want to peel it up. It's on. There we go. One down, three to go. Three more. You want to look at comments real quick while I Yeah, I'll go look at comments real fast. I don't even know if you can heat gun putty. That's drying it pretty good. I, I don't suggest heat gunning putty, but we're trying it. Any questions? Yeah. All right, Christy Jarvis says, good morning, you guys inspired me to buy a paint sprayer, but I have a question. How do you decide which spray pattern to use? My sprayer has three options, cone, vertical, and horizontal, thanks. So a lot of that just depends on what you're spraying. If you're spraying a big flat surface, I like to go with the vertical so you can move up and down. If you need to go side to side, you use the horizontal and for like something like legs, so you get less overspray, that's what you use the cone setting when you're painting spindles or feet or legs and there's nothing back behind it. That way you don't waste a bunch of paint off to the side. All right, now Hopefully that, I, that answers your question. I'm going to let it cool down. And I'm going to pull the camera back so you can see more of what we're doing over here. I'm like so impatient on lives. We should have filled these holes before. I should have known that I want to change it. It had like those, did they show them what hardware was on here? Yeah, it's just like the these, art deco. It's like 50s. It's not my favorite. I'm going to replace it with IOD knobs so I can stand on the makeup and cutesy. Oh, we got a new member, Kay Zoretic. Welcome, Kay. Make sure you're checking community tabs so you can get all the members only posts. There's links, passwords to the extras, and you'll get a link about 15 minutes before our live tonight at 8.30 Mountain Time. All right, let's see. Zeb always 
does a thorough and sound job. He is pretty good. And Judy says she loves the mix of the two colors. I love it too. I'm really, you know, it's liquid gold, this paint. I never want to waste it. So I always love to mix little dabs of things to create new colors. So that way I'm not wasting anything. This is, this is going to be a struggle. <laughs> yes, Johansson says, I love those feet. Nice juxtaposition to the straight lines of the cabinet. I think it's fun too. And actually, I don't think any, I think with this little lip here, these are about the right size. What are the hangers used that we um, hang stuff on walls? We use French cleats. You can pick them up on Amazon at your local hardware store. We um, sometimes go to Hobby Lobby or Home Depot. I also link them in the description of most videos. We have a list of like favorite tools and items yeah, that so we have. Yeah, you can click our Amazon links, which helps support us. So anytime we've got a link below for products we use, if you're an Amazon shopper, even if you're not buying an Amazon item, check the description box and click it and you can buy anything you need. And if you go through that link, we get a little bit of credit for yep. it. So if you're not going to buy it off of Amazon or whatever, you can still click it and see what we're using and find it local if you need it quick. This is cute. Joined about three years. Deb used to be quiet and kind of in the background. Now he's out there with you. I love watching you guys grow. Almost feels like family. Proud of you. Stay strong. Go forward. Thank you, April. So Zeb has social anxiety. I don't know if we talked about it a lot. And he's <laughs> it's not of, something I really enjoy discussing. No, he doesn't like to discuss his weaknesses. He's practically perfect in everything. Oh, and sure, this is not, sure. uh, it's not a bad thing. He's actually super, it's one of those things that's great because he understands other people that have it. But he did not like being in front of the camera. And so I used to have to beg him to be in front of the camera. And the more we saw the connection that people, because we've always had this connection, but not necessarily there on camera. And so as I started making more videos, especially the live videos, people were really loving the two of us together. It made for a better, I guess, episode. So he, Zeb loves to have a successful channel. So the better we did, the more he came on. And now it's like old news. Usually he's better on camera than me. No, I don't know about that. Yeah, well, you're definitely cuter. <laughs> I also don't know about that. Also true. Um, just so you guys know, a little heads up. My dad just got out of the hospital, but my mom just went into the hospital. So if you guys don't mind um, adding my mom and dad to your prayer list, that would be great. If, you know, they're, they're getting up there a little bit in age, and so sometimes this happens. So, anyways, extra prayers appreciated. Well, it's 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 been hard news for us because they were going to come up, and your dad was going to do some consulting on the house for us, and now he can't make it, so we're kind of sad about that, too. We'll send him lots of videos and FaceTime him and stuff, yeah. so... I forgot to FaceTime him last night. He called me when I was in the middle of tearing some ceiling out, and I had insulation falling all down on me. I'm like, hey dad, I'll call you back later. And I forgot when we got done. So I got to call him. Renee again. says that they're trying to drive us crazy. <laughs> my parents, I'm sure it's not intentional. I just talked to my mom yesterday, but she's got some, uh, and, and her stomach gets inflamed. So she's got a tube down her nose and she's really miserable. So. All right, let's see, gut issues. That's what Renee says, she's got gut issues. Do I sell table legs? We do not. We used to, and maybe someday we will as Zeb gets our CNC machine working for turning things, but right now... It works for turning things. I don't know how to program yeah, it. Yeah, Zeb doesn't know how to do it, so we don't do it currently. But that may be something that happens in the future. We're thinking eventually we may get to the point where we buy another CNC machine and then we have an employee that takes Zeb, Zeb designs and runs them for us. Harrington's making all the bun feet, so if you order bun feet right now, Harrington's the one making them. He's we making bun feet too or just tray feet? Both. Oh. We're getting little flecks of stuff in our paint, but when we sand it to distress it, it'll smooth it out. It just adds good. character. Judy says she loves my shirt, wishes we had 2XL. Me too. We use a company called Printful and they create all of the, we create the design and they provide the shirts. So we do have some unisex shirts that say I love jump, but I don't believe this style is limited. It's such a pain in the bum. Yeah, they don't have a ton of sizes on that. Uh, Cindy Dobson, what finish should I use on a high chair? I would use a DIY big top, sweet pickens top coat. A good water-based sealer is always best, and make sure you seal that at least a week before use, preferably even 30 days, allowing it time to cure. Because high chairs get lots of scrubbing, as I well know. I gotta get all this tape off now. If we don't, we'll miss it back behind something and paint over it. 
And nothing is worse than painted over tape on a piece of furniture when you're trying to refinish it 10 years down the road. I bought some table bases, no top. What would be the nicest and least expensive kind of top to build? Um, I like Douglas fir. It's strong. If you get it from like a hardware store, um, lay it flat in your garage for a couple weeks before you build a table out of it and let that continue drying out. Home Depot wood, they got great wood, but at the same time they use a swamp cooler in most of their stores and it adds a lot of humidity to the wood. Lowe's uses AC and it's a lot drier there, so if you need to build quicker, their lumber does less shrinking, but they have, they, I don't know that they have as big a lumber yard as Home Depot everywhere. Yeah, they don't. And so if you're gonna use like builder grade wood to build furniture, buy it and let it sit for about 30 days before you use it and you'll have much better results. You can also, like if it's not a dining table, if it's just a tabletop, you can also use a builder grade, like cabinet grade plywood that's sanded and then just trim out the edges. That's also an option. Yeah, they make a veneer that's like the perfect size for it that just goes right over the top. So you can use that and then just trim out the edges. That would be really inexpensive. I'm going to move this on you because I, I can't screw this. Oh, well, okay, me, can I finish painting this one? You, you're, you'll be okay because I'm just going to prop it up with my, oh. my drill box. With your drill box, all right. Multitasking that thing. I probably missed a spot on these feet, don't worry. I'll come back. We always come back after the lives and touch everything up. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday we had we have four birthdays within two and a half weeks. So yesterday we celebrated Jack's birthday because we had cousins here. Thought it would be fun and, and did a little party. Although I thought, oh, it'll just be inexpensive. I'll get some McDonald's. I'll buy, I'll buy some pinata. Anyway, it was not. It wound, by the time I was done, I spent a few hundred dollars. I was like, oh, I couldn't rent it a place for that. <laughs> it's all right, though. Jack had a really good time, and that's all that matters. So we got three more birthdays. Redrick's next, then Harrington, then Odelia. So it gets a little bit busy and expensive this time of year. My teenagers are easy. They just want like expensive presents, not necessarily big parties usually. Yeah, Harrington wanted a Speed Flex helmet for football. We got to looking at it. I'm like, good grief, that's more than I spend on three of your birthdays. But it also <laughs> protects his head. Yes, it does. So there's do that. that. And we kind of <laughs> like his brain, so it's going to protect it. Painting feet is like not the well and they're shiny too oh, can you put that back up so i can get the bottom of that foot yeah this I'll one just, was kind of hanging over I'll hold the edge. That for you so um you can see here oh, the paint's there even more than on the white you can see where the wood's coming through these were probably like a, a semi-gloss finish and that's that's you're just gonna have to paint over them again um, do a second coat the paint sticks fine it just you got to get that tack coat on there yep just helps and then when you do that second coat make sure not to push too hard and reactivate the paint all right, thank you. Oops, I don't want to get all those shavings in my brush. We're just adding texture. Oh. It'll look great once it's sanded. Yeah. You stress everything anyway, so. I always sand my whole piece and get off any chunks, and then it's chippy where the chunk came off. My little trace. Let me grab a brush. I'll help you paint these. Are these, are these ready to sand? Yeah. I bet I could sand those. I'll sand those. Sand flush. them soft. They're not quite ready. If you were doing this at home, I would not recommend sanding them already, but we're live TV, so it is what it is. Oh, yes, there's also a fire going on, too. Oh, man, there's so. just tons of stuff going on right now. There's a now. fire going on by where my parents live. I don't, I haven't heard of many fires here in Utah yet. We had a bunch last summer. It was bad. Um, what PSI air compressor should I get for an HVLP paint sprayer? So I would get at least an 8-gallon sprayer. Most com Compressors, even little ones, can achieve about 135 PSI, which is more than you'll need for the sprayer. I run my sprayer at about 60 to 65 most of the time, so depending on what I'm It's more important that it's at least eight gallons, because the problem is even if the yeah. PSI is correct um, for your HVLP, if it's not at least eight gallons, it's not gonna keep up and it's gonna be very, very slow. We tried to spray a piece of furniture with a, a pot compressor. Was it, how many gallons is that, like three? Uh, it's six. Six. And I'm faster with a brush, so you at least want eight <laughs> gallons, so that way it's quicker and saves you time. What is PSI? It's pounds per square inch. So that's the pressure at which the air is coming out of the gun against what your paint is and spraying it out the nozzle. So it's the pounds per square inch of pressure coming out. Yeah. That's a good question. I never thought about it. Like, I know what it is, but I never thought about what it actually is. 
a three gallon compressor will not work. You are better off using a brush because it will take forever for it to build up pressure. I, 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 we used an eight gallon for years and that's even, it was a little underpowered, but it's all we could afford. So I would say no minimum, no more, less than eight gallons. The thing about an eight gallon compressor is it'll achieve the air pressure and be able to maintain it for continuous flow. You may have to take a break every now and then if you're spraying a really big piece. But for the most part, you can spray an entire dresser before you got to worry about air pressure. So here's the good news on stencils. Somebody from the UK, it is expensive to have them shipped. However, coming up about the middle of August, we are going to open up our stencils to wholesale and hopefully we'll have some UK retailers where you can get them from. Or if you do resell, you could be a retailer. So we'll have more information on that coming up. So on top of buying a house and all this other stuff, um, Caitlin and I and Zeb and my sister-in-law Mariah, who will be my retail director, have been working on getting our stencil line ready for wholesale. Caitlin has worked, got the website almost completely up and running. We've got our manufacturer geared to go. So about the middle of August, we'll be opening that up to wholesale and we are going to start off. I think if Caitlin's on here, Caitlin can let you know the countries that we'll be open to. But I know UK, Canada, Australia, and then there's a few more that we're starting with. And um, the shipping, it, if you get signed up to be a wholesaler, the first like month and a half, the shipping is gonna be inexpensive. And if you're from the US, I think it's like $20 flat shipping until the end of September for all orders for wholesalers. And um, if you're in the US, the shipping will be free for the first month and a half. So it's gonna be great, we're super excited. All right, so I got these oh, knobs on, they're not on. Oh. I'm just, I'm thinking the higher is better. Oh, for sure, let's paint it first. Will you paint those white for me so they can dry and we can show you how to stamp them? Yep. We're only at 11.05, so we're going to get this thing pretty well underway. Yep. All right. Pull that dust up. Yeah. I'm going to push the dust this way. We can wipe. We'll, we'll just, once it's all dry, I'll just blow it out with the air compressor. The dust is going this way because it's not painted inside there. There we go. And when we're not on camera, we'll open up these cabinet doors and do a nice little crisp edge, so don't you worry, guys. The inside's already painted white, so we'll leave that, but we'll do a nice crisp edge. And I'm thinking I'm gonna use the JRV stencils, the floral ones, on this one to make it cutesy. I'm just, luckily this dresser is busy enough that you can't really see where those holes were. <laughs> you should really wait a couple hours and then sand your buddy. Well, and it's, I might have to go back and do them one more time, but it'll just be that little spot and we'll just have to paint yeah, it. Yeah, then we'll just touch it up. There's a lot of stuff that happens off camera, but we don't want you guys to sit here and watch us for two hours. You probably get pretty bored. So someone asked a question that I missed. I think it was, I didn't see who their name was, but it was, they asked if you have to sand before you use Sweet Pickens milk paint, which um, the answer to that is no, but it depends on how much you want to chip off. Yeah, so DIY paint and Sweet Pickens milk paint, the preference is the same. I hardly ever sand. So if I don't want it to chip off at all with milk paint, then I'll add bond. Usually if I don't want it to chip off, I just use DIY paint and I use milk paint for chippy situations. And sometimes I use DIY paint and I use Sweet Pickens in conjunction and create a fun look of both. I got a brush that was way too big for this job. Oh. <laughs> yeah, always pick the tool that's the right size for the job that you're going through. It's going to be quick though. I mean, it's going to get on there. Yeah, you can use the heat gun on them. So these knobs, did you already tell them what these knobs are from? So he's using the IOD knobs. Do you want to show them how they're threaded? They're routered and threaded, like metal threaded, so they go on super easy. And we have a stamp that will actually stamp them and put a design on there that we also carry from IOD. And we sell at JamieRayVintage.com that allows you to create one of a kind knobs. And I love it because hardware is expensive and I hardly ever buy hardware anymore. I pretty much almost always make all my own knobs. It's really nice that they're threaded because you know sometimes you get those, those little uh, inexpensive wood knobs and you gotta run that screw through there and often you gotta pre-drill them or it splits it. And these already just have the threads on so they come off real nice and easy. Well, and cheap wood done. knobs aren't as tall and do not have the routered edge. Yeah, they've got a so lot of fun detail. So these have a lot of detail and just make it look so much nicer. All right, so that's paint it on there. Okay. Cute. All right, it's gonna be so cute for a little girl. Okay, you're gonna heat gun those and then I, Zeb, 
I'll answer questions for a minute and then we will work on those knobs and we'll work on stenciling the front of this. So it's cute. Hold on, where's my, I don't know if that'll work. Oh, uh, it's up over right I better plug this in, it's gonna die. The iPad? Yeah. I know the kids have been using it and we couldn't find one this morning, who knows. Kim says, if I tried to paint the way Jamie does, I'd have paint all over my sleeves. I actually don't have any, knock on wood, any paint on me, but in my defense, I've painted like <laughs> a lot of pieces, so I've gotten a little better over time. And actually, the more I paint on camera, the neater I've become. I think having a YouTube channel has helped me increase neatness. I used to be worse, if you can believe it. She used to not be allowed to paint in the house. Yeah, for sure. So I am using the number 12. It's not synthetic, so it's got a little bit more texture, which I love on old pieces like this because this has been painted with a brush a million and three times. So using a synthetic is Here, really Here, come closer because I'm going to turn the heat gun on. So come closer oh. so they can hear you. Okay, using a synthetic brush really wouldn't make that much of a difference because it's still going to have brush strokes because it's been painted so many times. Okay, I'm just looking to see. So Actually, we're, just, was, we're just heat gunning these so that we can get a stamp on them real quick before the live video is over. That's the ratio of the two colors. It's 50% petticoat pink to 50% cowgirl coral. Let's see. Yes, it is good to stick the knobs in foam. That helps you so you don't get fingerprints on them. We always distress them so they're usually okay. All right, Deb, talk to the people. You... You, uh, I'm gonna go get the supplies that we need. You need to go get the stamp stuff? The stamp, yeah, the stamp stuff, because I'm gonna do stamp stuff on that. Alright, All right. Okay. All right. It's easy to find the stamp one because I keep that knob top. Judy Lindman, can I order the number 12 in synthetic? Yes, um, the DIY it's paint. the DIY paint or the, the DIY paintbrush is synthetic and it's the same size and shape as the number 12. So shall I just look under DIY paint? But yeah, it's not in the brush section. It's with the DIY paint. So you gotta, if you just type in brush on our website in the search bar, it'll come up. Arcia you. French, hope I said your name right. Um, so this piece was a built-in in the house that we just bought and we've already torn down some walls and taken some built-ins out and we liked it, but it won't work in the space where it was. So we're going, we just fixed it up. We put some thrifted bun feet that we got for $4. They were a dollar a piece. And we've got these on here to give it a little bit of height. And then we'll sell this at our shop. How much are we gonna sell this for, Jamie? Oh, I don't know, probably like $95. It's not very big. Yeah, it's not super big, so it'll probably only be like about 95. Oh, I forgot what I was bringing you this too. Oh, I was bringing you this too. Okay, so these are the knob topper stamps. And the flexi stamper this is what zeb is going to be using to do our knobs if you guys have watched our channel you've seen us use these a million times we use them a ton they're always on the top of my pile this is a big piece so we don't have a lot of work room here yeah. let me move some of these tools first don't okay don't want to melt that here hold that somewhere. and then i'm using the jrv corner stencil and it's floral i don't know how to it comes in a pack so this is one of my jamie ray vintage stencils from my first release so i'm going to go grab my little c stencil brush and you already have white swan out, right? Yep, right here. Okay. And the pad for the stencil. Now, here's the thing. If I was worried about when I sand the white swan, the powder getting all over this because it's super um, pigmented, then I would seal this first, then stencil. But I don't mind if a little white gets everywhere because chances are I might white wax it anyways. So I'm just going to stencil directly over the paint without sealing in between. All right, Zeb, I'm going to grab the little C. Okay. What paint am I using to stamp these? Yeah, give me some, do we have black? Where, the question remains, where is the ink pad? This cabinet is a hot mess. Yeah, we got to go through our cabinet. We organized it about a year ago, and it's it's way overdue for another organization run. It needs an exorcism. All right, so I got these two I knobs. Find that. I, I'll just do, I'll just do some paint. What knob topper do you want on here? What knob topper do you want on here? Uh, 
We'll use weathered wood. I like this color for What that. do you think about this one? This Nothing little too busy. Wreath. That would oh, be... that would be cute. So if it has more detail, I suggest using ink. We sell blank ink pads and the IOD ink. It's amazing. Um, but if you don't want to invest in ink, you can use, or if you want a painted look, you can use a DIY paint on them. And in our case, we can't find the ink. So here we go. Wait, that's wrong. Just putting it on, showing you guys how to put it on backwards. And if you use the ink, you get more of a hand painted look as opposed to like a crisper image. So crisper image with the ink, hand painted with the paint. All right, I'm gonna heat gun these corners so I can film penciling. So do you wanna do that on the other side so that way they're not right by my heat gun? Well, hang on for just a sec because I got set up right okay. here so that the camera's looking at it. All right, I'll go over questions. Caitlin's dropping all kinds of links. So if you guys wanna links to our website, check those. All right, I'm just gonna use my finger to put the paint on this so it doesn't get all over the place. You could have it out on the mat and press it down. Yeah. Or brush it on here. Oh, yeah, you need a brayer, Zeb. Yeah, I didn't have a brayer out, so finger I'm brayer. Get it? No, I'm already done. Okay. When in doubt, use your finger, but a brayer is even better. A brayer is like a hard roller that we sell that rolls the paint on there. We'll see how this goes. It may not be clean. It may be bad. We may be trying it again. That's okay. It's just paint. Okay, so the grid system helps you line it up, and you can see through the whole time. You can use it without the flexi stamper, but, oh, that's a hot mess. Yeah. Repaint it quick. Okay. Well, just wipe that off and repaint it white. I'll go get a brayer and do it right. I'll get right on that. Well, you could just, you know, um, make, make it look like it's aged. It looks a little bit like glaze. Where's the right. brayer is the question. I haven't seen a brayer in a hot minute. I haven't used brayer. I've been using the ink. All right. We're Can a you mess. Did you find the black ink pad? No. Did you find it? No. Sorry, guys. This is live TV here in the Ray house. We've been a little busy to be organized for it. All right. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. Well, since he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and dry this section here so I can show you how to stencil. Although you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. Ugh. Sorry for the shaky camera. I found one. You found one? You're winning. Now I'm going to use the black paint too. Okay. Alright, that's dry enough. I dried this one. Try that one first, just to let that one cool down. Okay. Let me, I gotta paper towel this off. Can you okay, can you unplug this again? Yes. Uh, I will. We will get knobs on this eventually. Where's the white paint? What do you right do with it? There? Oh, it's over down by my tools by the door. All right. Okay, and I'm back. So we used DIY white swan, is that what this is? Yes. Yes. We used white swan on the knobs and I'm gonna use it to stencil. You don't need very much to stencil. This little mat we get at Ikea, little C brush. But I, if Debbie's still watching, this is for you because you always tell me you can't stencil. Little C brush. And then you're gonna offload to where your brush is almost dry and it's very evenly distributed. See how dry that is? That is a dry brush. So okay. it doesn't take a lot of ink either for these. This is the Black Iron Orchid Designs or IOD. It's gonna make somebody's dog. I'm just going up and down. You wanna show them? Yeah, let me bring you closer. This is gonna be a little bit loud, guys, but I'm just going up and down with my little seed. The brush matters. A good stencil brush is everything. You should also tape down your stencil. De Debbie commented, hopefully she ordered the little C. I told her she, she should try it. Debbie has all of my stencils. I sent them to her. All right, we'll show you the reveal on the stencil in just a sec. I need more paint. Just dip it in there? No, I, that's too much. If you dip it directly in there, you definitely have way too much. All right, so ink going on here, just real lightly, and that's much better than the finger method. Belay that earlier. Don't, don't do it's that. Much better than the finger method, I would think so. And well, now you showed him you can't just use a finger. Yeah. What not to do? All right, I'm just gonna stencil the one side. 
Oh my gosh, that's so cute. We could do all the corners. Should, all right, should so I, do I think. All the corners, or should I just do? Okay, I'm having a. This one's gonna. This one's for a bigger stencil, I think, or uh, knob, knob. The bigger oh, size knob. Oh, that's the problem. Yeah, because it's just going down over the side. So this is the smaller knob. They sell two sizes, and that particular stamp is not working great because it's like just the perfect size to go right around that little lip, and it doesn't get a good impression. So once again, I'm gonna wipe it off real quick. Once again, it's just paint, y'all. That's somebody's paint page, it's my friend. It's just paint, y'all. That's her Facebook page. But it really is. It's just paint. If you don't like it, you can paint over it. We'll show you what this cabinet looks like. All right, so now I have to pick another one here. What do you think? You're going you're gonna to have to make that executive decision. An on executive your own. decision. Found one that's designed for the little ones. Alright. Alright, so it has two spots because there's a large knob and a small knob topper. So you just put the small one in, in the small section. And knobs are round, so it doesn't matter if you really have them all up or down. Oh, I always try to put this on the wrong side. Make sure your stuff's clean, guys. Yeah, we do what we say, not what we actually do. It's the true story of our life. I'll get back to comments in a minute if you have questions. If you like these stencils I'm using, make sure you go to our website. Okay. Attempt number eight. Attempt number 45. I really should have taped this down. All right, I was a little juicy on it. Because because of the brayer, it put a little more ink on it. If you use a stamp pad, you'll get a lot. Oh, I'm trying to say I'm something. Sorry. Hold on, I'm almost done. <laughs> okay. If you use a stamp pad, you'll get lots, lot, a lot less ink on your your uh, stamp, and it'll get a much crisper impression. But you could definitely tell that that's a horse, and I'm pretty happy with that. You could definitely tell it's a horse. It doesn't look like a rooster. No, it's a horse. All right, I'm gonna stop banging. I got three corners done. It'll give them the idea, and then we'll um, show it to them. And this side's still wet over here, anyways. All right, so I didn't reload because it still had a lot of ink on it, and you can see it's starting to crisp up because it's like getting a little bit less. It, they, there is a trick if you're using paint, stamp once without once you brayer it, and then use it on your knob, and then it removes some of the paint. All right. Those are cute. If Josie and Sally watch this, I'm sorry. You know, I'm normally much better than that at no, stamping it's knobs. <laughs> it's, it's great. We'll distress them a little bit. I always say that distressing hides a multitude of sins. Can they see these, these stencils? Oh, we'll go flying. I'm going right. to stand it up here in a minute. All right, we're going to give you a little, while well, those are drying, here's the stencil. So I did the corners. These floral stencils were actually made for furniture. Another thing you can do is use like lightweight speckle and do a texture, but I'm going to do all four corners. It's such a simple piece, I feel like adding some stencils gives it a lot of detail and it's so cute for a little girl. Horses and flowers, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna read comments. Well, Should I put these knobs on? Yeah, go So ahead, that they can on. see? Are you yeah. gonna do another, I mean, I guess if we don't do another coat of paint, it will be fine. If we do another coat um, of paint, we can pull these knobs right off. No, I'm only gonna do a touch up coat because we have almost full coverage with that one coat. So I'll come back and touch up a few areas that are streaky and call it a day because we're gonna distress it. It covered really well. Chalk It Up says, for years I stenciled my borders in my home and changed them up regularly. My husband being an early bird for work, just love that I work best at night. He'd wake up sometimes to the tapping. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Little tap tapping is definitely necessary, depending on what you're tapping is how loud it actually is. All right, so this putty is not dry but we're going with it anyway. Um, I don't have stencil sales often. Anything happens about every six months, but it's not a given. So yeah, I'm we sorry just had one in sale. June. Yeah. So it'll um, be a minute before the next one comes around. Oh. Terry says, when I do a new piece, I always paint the back, bottom, inside, and also take off and scrub the hardware. Sometimes I'll spray, paint the hardware, sometimes just leave alone. Good job. 
Um, sometimes I, like this is kind of short, so I'll probably paint the back if I have enough left over. The inside's already painted white, and I probably won't paint the bottom because nobody's going to see it unless they flip it over. Will you be designing vintage beverage style stencils? I don't know. I actually am halfway through my fall lineup coming up, and I plan on um, doing some bohemian and coastal stencils now that we're going to be opening up to wholesale just because I know I'm going to have a lot of wholesalers on the coast and wholesalers that love boho, so I just want to make sure everybody gets what they want. Anyway. Have you done any projects with a Cubano stamp? Yeah, I actually used it to stamp rain, uh, sorry, drop cloth to create a chair for a seat, and I'm thinking we might have use for that stamp coming up in um, our new house that we're working on. I don't know what we'll be doing, but maybe we'll stamp a floor somewhere. Our timeline is tight. <laughs> yeah. We some, of, some of the detail stuff might go in later. We're trying to get it livable by Christmas. Yeah, so we've decided we're going to do, we'll, we'll leave lots of projects. so Because we're still renting projects. here while we build on it so the kids don't have to live in the renovation and we don't have to deal with that. So as soon as we can get out of here, that's more budget for the house. Yep. All right. I think I've answered every question. We will show you. Do you let Zeb, go ahead and stencil. Will you stencil that one corner? Just is it dry enough? Oh yeah, that's fine. It won't, okay, go it ahead shouldn't. and stencil it so that way they can get the whole look all together. So where's your little C? Oh, my it's way little C's over, over there. Zeb's gonna stencil that one little corner over there, and then we'll lift this up so you guys can get the full vibe going on. And then we just need to do some touch-up paint and sand and seal. And then, like I said, we left the inside white, so we'll brush on a coat of white Swan in there before we seal it. Sorry, I'm right here. I also Did mentioned this already, but I suggest you tape your stencils on with low tack tape. We just hold it. Sometimes we pay for that later. What did you say? I'm close enough. Okay. See if you're faster than me. I'm not. You're, you're very quick at painting and stenciling. Well, Sometimes my stuff's a little neater, but we just stress anyway, so what, it's what kind of, yeah, it kind of doesn't matter. Your stuff is dirty socks all the time so you're not neat and everything i usually plan on wearing those again if i leave them out. second day socks gross <laughs> well a lot of times there i didn't work in these and i wore them to the store because my work socks had sawdust all in them so i only wore them for like an hour oh so you can second day them if you only wear them for a small portion well my socks i can i don't wear socks so i can't say anything i hardly ever wear socks i have feet claustrophobia i feel like it's a real thing i'm not sure that it's real but i just don't like socks I'm gonna have to get more paint out. Do I have stinky feet, Sim? No. Oh, okay, just checking. Because that's what I get asked that a lot. I'm like, I don't know, I don't, I don't smell my own feet, but I don't wear socks. You're a long so. ways away from those feet. Yeah, I'm a long ways away from the feet, so how would I know? Although we have kids with stinky feet, and you definitely know. All right, we're almost done. We're almost ready for the grand reveal here. Are you just gonna stand it up here and then pan here? No, I'm gonna stand it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd stand it up here because I just painted the feet and you don't want little pink rings on the floor. Oh, uh, the color of my KitchenAid? I don't oh. Know. What? <gasps> it was a little wet. It was a little wet. It's okay. It's we'll repaint it. I don't know the color of my KitchenAid, but Caitlin might. She's the one that bought it. Oh, it's like some seafoam color. It's got a they they named KitchenAid named it a fancy name. All right. You want to tell them real quick while I'm standing this up about our appliance shopping. Appliance shopping. <laughs> I think we'll have to share that for another day. When the appliances come in, we'll video them, and then I'll talk to you all about our appliance situation. All right. They're gonna be awesome. So I'm going to move you way back sales guy. All right, we're moving so back. you can see it. Open you're going to, the there's, there's stuff on the top of the fridge. Sorry. That's where I keep okay, all this stuff. I don't want the kids to touch. Do you need my help lifting it? Um, maybe so I don't touch the paint all over. Are you Jack on? we're almost done with our life. So just move it chill out. Okay. Hold on. Don't. I'm just trying. It's a little wet and touching the front. All right. 
We'll come get you a good pan. I feel like it might not be level. It's level. To, it's on this cloth, this tarp. Okay. All right, so that's high up there. But here is the pan. Can you see it on camera, Jamie? I can't see the camera. Oh, yeah, there's the top. Now you can pan down. And it actually turned out cool because of this lip on the front. You can only see the little part of the feet. So it looks like it's got fun little turned feet. I'm going to fix your situation here. All right. So it's a little bigger than I thought. It might be like a 125 piece. 125? Well, yeah, because like I you were you were wanting to do 90. I'm thinking it's going to be and a little more look than that. And it'll way better once it's distressed because all that white paint underneath will come up, and then we'll repaint that top that's a little bit scratched. But I think it looks good, and it looks like a piece of furniture as opposed to like a built-in that we just ripped out. So and it's probably handmade. Oh yeah, it's they, they oh. built it into the house, and it was probably done by the homeowner 70, 80 years ago. And I don't have a lot of pink in my shop, so this will be great. And it'll be a fun addition of a different color, so. All right, make sure you guys are heading over to jamierayvintage.com for all the products that you saw us use today. If you're watching the replay, Zeb will have the link in the description below. Don't forget to hit notifications so that way you don't miss any of our home videos. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. DIY. Jack's down here. You can't see DIY. Him. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you. If you want to catch tomorrow's video, it's demo day number one. <laughs> yeah, it's like demo first demo video comes Dad, up tomorrow. Now can you log me in? Yeah, now we'll log you in. in. Bye, buddy. See you guys. Bye.